Well, I thought the storms were coming to the Central Plains tomorrow, but I guess they were a day early. This is, yeah, Iowa. Iowa, parts of downtown Davenport. to all of the videos. Iowa, again, flooded. What do we have here? We're going to move now to that dangerous weather in the heartland. At this point, we are told at least 16 tornadoes have touched down in the southern plains. This scene was shot by a drone in Oklahoma. Forecasters are watching for more tornadoes there and in Arkansas, Kansas, and Missouri. There is also a flooding emergency in Iowa. A levee breach on the Mississippi River sent water rushing through streets. Omar Villafranca is in Oklahoma City with more. I hear it tearing through the valley right now. Late this afternoon, a series of tornadoes struck the Great Plains. Debris! This drone footage shows a close-up view of one tearing through farmland in Sulphur, Oklahoma, ripping through trees and even taking a drink over a small lake. At least a dozen tornadoes have been confirmed, striking in four different states. Big tornado. Five states are under a tornado watch until late into the evening. The damage in rural areas in Oklahoma show roofs ripped off, homes torn apart, and downed power lines. So far, no injuries have been reported. Meanwhile, the severe weather has also triggered flash flood warnings. Rebecca Nicky co-owns a clothing store in Iowa. And we grabbed what little possessions were handy and kind of ran. In Davenport, Iowa, a levee was breached along the Mississippi River, forcing authorities to issue evacuation orders and seek higher ground. It could be a bumpy night for 13 million people on the Great Plains. Here in Oklahoma City, they're bracing for the possibility of tornadoes, hail, and flooding overnight. Wow. Okay. What is this? Oklahoma City. Why? You guys in Oklahoma, why do we see almost blood red waters? And as you watch, you, you have to wonder where did this water come from? Where did it come from? because on both sides there is no flooding. So, is it the drains? Your sewage? Your sewer drains? Are they blocked? But why is it blood red? Uh, maybe you have an answer, you guys who live in Oklahoma. I sure would love to hear from you. Yeah, it goes on, guys. It goes on. Homes damaged. <laughs> Wrong video playing. 4100 Road in Northwest Rogers County and behind me is one of the four homes in their district that has seen significant damage from the storm earlier. Pretty much this entire property is covered with debris. You can see a huge pile back there where some family members and friends have gathered out by the, behind those cars. And just take a look at the home. It just looks completely damaged. The outside punctured with a lot of debris on the side of the house, the roof torn off and the windows too. I was told from a neighbor that a woman was here alone while the storm came in. Thankfully, she is okay. She described to her neighbor that things were being pulled out of her home. That's how strong this storm was. And thankfully, I was told by... Pulled out of her home? Pulled out. Wow. Okay. Sounds like they had strange winds. Get something in there? Yeah, we got to help people out. Hey, man, we need to check out that dog. 
Okay, he's he's out there trying. He's checking on somebody right now that uh, is in there. An elderly woman. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll cut his audio for right now, just to in case they say something personal or whatever. Uh, but uh, this is what's scary is because you have no idea where the road is, and uh, so uh, Darren's out there at this moment. Um, uh, so this is uh, something that uh, with with folks just want to make sure that they're okay. So Darren's helping somebody, but this is a problem that's going up uh, in the water right now. Looks like uh, we'll call it a water rescue at this point, obviously, uh, because of what's going on uh, here. And it looks like they're trying to get the person out uh, safely. And uh, so this this happens uh, uh, several times. And uh, so they're getting her out and uh, trying to get her to safety. Uh, so this is why we always talk about turn around, don't go drown. You're looking at no water right now. And so there's folks coming over to help and make sure that uh, those folks get out. It uh, looks like some ladies there, and uh, they probably had no idea there wasn't a road there. Maybe they were turning to turn around to get out of the water and say, turn around, don't drown, and end up going right into a ditch. You can't tell how deep it is when there's water all over everything. Stacia mentioned that before. So, okay, let's... so we're seeing an awful lot of uh, weather-related events. I posted a video on Montreal, Manitoba. Uh, Quebec, is it Ottawa, another uh, province or state in Canada, a whole lot of flooding. A determined Montanan taking the over 1,000 mile round trip trek to Nebraska to help recent flooding victims. Mike Takuchi from Columbus, Montana, originally posted on Facebook asking if anybody would be interested in donating to help the victims. He said he would provide transportation for the supplies if he got enough donations and money for fuel. Shortly after the post was made, the first reply back said they would pay for all the fuel costs. He then got in contact with people from Nebraska to see what they needed most. They said they needed hay, fencing supplies, barbed wire, wood posts, fence staples, and supplies for animals. The thing that struck me is when I was following those people over there where the watchful fire was, is they said neighbor is a verb. And I thought, well, that's a pretty cool way to put it. You know, one of those people got burned out, you know, what, a couple of years ago or less? And, and they were volunteering to take hay and stuff down to Nebraska. I thought, whoa, <laughs> that's pretty good. I guess they were paying it, paying it forward because, you know, people had brought hay to them after they lost a lot of stuff. Just felt like we should do something. Ways to don't. Yes. So, any of you in the surrounding area that can pitch in, that would be great. It can be found on our website. All right, let's go ahead and send on. Nebraska still hurting. Continue to follow up with those trying to recover from flooding that devastated roadways. Now having some students even taking boats to get to school. Cammie Raisler shows us how the Nyberg community is coping. It's definitely no ordinary way to get to school, cruising the Niobrara River by boat. The biggest problem right now for the people of Niobrara is this bridge being closed. The other end of this bridge has completely washed away. And the closure has caused so many problems. How did you used to get to school? Uh, usually it was just a 10 minute drive. And now what is it? Uh, it's like uh, the long boat ride. It's, it's not the safest thing in the world, but it's a lot better than having to drive on roads that are muddy and county roads that when it rains, a four-wheel drive vehicle isn't safe to drive on them either. Others at school in Niobrara have been forced to stay in town. For the whole sisters, that means only getting to see their parents on the weekends. It would take so long just for us to get to school every morning. School is one thing, but farmers and ranchers are taking the biggest hit because this bridge is out. Most of our neighbors have livestock on both sides. It's been a nightmare. I've got to drive. When we first started, I was driving 143 miles to chore on both sides. It's probably costing us, my husband and I, if we take one vehicle, probably 50 bucks a day. Just because a truck gets, you know, our big truck gets five miles to the gallon, you know, that that adds up very fast. It's the worst time of year because it's cabin season and they have to drive you know, the drive they need to be with them cattle, you know, every couple hours that are having their babies. So it's devastating on them too. And then trying to get hay 
uh, trying to get hate from one side to the other. You know, we, the only access we have is coming in from the West. So from wacky ways to get to school to teachers putting on hundreds of extra miles through sometimes really rough roads, it's doable but still devastating, especially for those whose livelihood is this land. For the people that have cattle on both sides, this extra commute, they're losing livestock and nothing makes that up. Again, that was Cami Raisler reporting. Man, people are hurting. Okay, I want you to see what is taking place. Once again, South Carolina, North Carolina blitzed with frequencies. But this has been going on now every night for quite a while. You have from Texas on up the East Coast, the frequencies are intense. Now, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what is taking place. It is not a surprise that you've got severe weather in Oklahoma and in Iowa, Missouri. Well, you have tornado watches in the St. Louis area until 3 a.m. Now, can you see these microwaves do I have to zoom in No, you can see the microwaves taking place this is high frequency heating oh man it's hard to see this over and over and over again you see the right angled uh, precipitation that is not mother nature all right so you have high frequency heating coming from the next red Doppler radar stations, but you also have microwaves heating up the atmosphere. But I want to go to the composite radar and then I will take you to some regions. All right, do you see all of what appear to be, um, well, circle lines, straight lines. This entire thing is riddled with, with very powerful frequencies. And it's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Okay, can you see this? very defined circular line right here. Can you see this line uh, which has a circular pattern but bring all of these lines and complete the circle and within that circle you could have a whole lot of severe weather but this is loaded it is loaded here is another now these are referred to as the next um, next red harp rings or harp next red rings here is one here's two here's well let me take you along here's three Four, and they're intersecting, which means that you've got very powerful frequencies happening right here. And you have the extremely low frequencies as well. This cutout right here is a signature of an extremely low frequency. Here you have your next red harp ring, another next red harp ring. Look at how these intersect. So they're bringing you another man-made storm. And man, you know, you listen to these people. They have no clue. They have no clue that they are being destroyed 
that they're in a war and weather is being used as a weapon. So we've got extremely low frequencies, high frequency heating, and we've got the microwaves, which you can see right in here, all of these ripples. Lots and lots and lots of frequencies that, well, can spawn tornadoes, very high winds, flash flooding, Look at all of the microwaves rippling through this entire storm. And then, of course, you have all of you know, the frequencies surrounding the storm. Look at this. Really? You're going to tell me that that is Mother Nature? I hope not. I hope not. So these squares are now showing up quite a lot and well are we looking at scalar squares you know what hang on for one sec so this is my weather modification playlist on my channel and if you don't know much about harp and nexrad and uh, scalar energy then I recommend watching how nexrad harp works, turning natural storms into biblical floods. Um, next red weather radar plus harp weather modification explained. Weather modification, artificial earthquake technology and harp, Dr. Rosalie Bertel. This is a very good lecture. It's in four parts. Scalar, VLF, very low frequencies, or extremely low frequencies, ultra low frequencies, weather modification everywhere in the U.S. Um, yeah, I want to show you. There's, I have other, I have a lot of videos on this playlist. Um, But if you want to understand scalar technology and how incredibly powerful and dangerous it is, you can watch HARP and advances in Tesla technology. And I have uh, Tom Bearden's, some of Tom Bearden's talks, retired military. His expertise was in um, scalar energy. Now if I can't find it uh, quickly then you'll come over to my playlist and you will find videos that have the word scalar in it. Tom Bearden, here, retired Lieutenant Colonel Tom Bearden, scalar technology being used to control weather. All right. So when you see those squares, very often they were referred to as scalar squares. And if you want to learn about it, you know, watch. But I want to show you. This video I posted in, was it 2013? You want to see the, uh, was it Moore, Oklahoma, where the tornado just, the dam the destruction was so intense, unbelievably intense. Well, I captured something as I was watching the live stream of this tornado bearing down on Moore, California, uh, Oklahoma. And I can't find it in, ah, here it is. Let's see. <laughs> Mr. President.
It looks weirder than weird. Mm -hmm. It looks split. This looks like a frequency tornado. I'm sorry. And what more might be like that? Let me here. So yeah, this is when you had a EF5 tornado that struck Moore, Oklahoma, and I caught the following aerial footage on a local news channel just before the tornado had formed. So you're going to see this, what everybody believes is a natural cloud, nothing natural about it. It looks weirder than weird. Mm -hmm. It looks split. This looks like a frequency tornado. I'm sorry. And what more might be like that? Whoa! Did you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The clouds are splitting apart. Yeah. Holy shit! Right there. You think frequencies were used? Yes, they were. So, um,. When you see all of these frequencies taking place, and then you learn, hey, you got flooding, you got tornadoes, you got homes damaged, uh, cars damaged, you've got elderly women being rescued from their cars. Americans, please wake up already, please. Because it's really hard to see this damage over and over and over again. Look at this. Okay? This is not a natural storm. Look at all of the scalar squares. This is uh, northwest Texas, Oklahoma. I'll go to one more area of this and that these you've got the radar pulsing up high frequencies into the ionosphere then modulated with extremely low frequencies and yes I have it's hard to watch this guys it's really hard to watch it it's so I mean how people can be involved in this and feel good about themselves. It, it's I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. But here, again, the next next red harp rings intersecting all over the place, and then you have these extremely low frequencies on the periphery coming at this storm. Look at this. Then you have this extremely low frequency right here. Uh, this is Iowa. This is Missouri. I hope I'm getting it right. It's hard to see with all of this uh, man-made weather taking place. So you have an extremely low frequency that is hitting this these very powerful frequencies. Oh my god, guys. Well, I don't know what to say. I just wish Americans would wake up. All links are below. I hope to God, everybody, all, all of you, stay safe, you guys in the Central Plains. Missouri is looking at possible tornadoes until like 3 a.m. They're still claiming that millions upon millions of you guys in the Central Plains are still looking at a whole lot of severe weather. So I hope you all stay safe and nothing happens to you. But so much has happened. Has happened already. And Nebraskans still need help. Um, those in Iowa still need help. My God. Canadians need help. A whole lot of people need help. 